With a lot of my projects lately, I have been using 3D printing. And I'm fairly new to 3D printing myself, but I've been learning rapidly. And I'm by no means an expert, but I did want to go through with you exactly how I make my characters. A while back, I saw that a viewer had used one of my videos to create her own project. And I was very, very flattered by that. But I also noticed that within my video, I made an error. I had quoted one um, website for the creation of my small Scrooge, when in actuality, I used a different one. And I use a site called Hero Forge. And today, what I wanna do is step you right through from the very creation of my character through setting it up for a 3D print and then outputting it to a 3D printer. Because I think with 3D printers, we all have the opportunity to make some really great stuff, but there seems to be that barrier to entry of how do I do this? And what I wanna do is drop that barrier of entry and make it easier for you to create your own characters. So this is what I want to do with this particular video is walk you through that pro process. So when you start Hero Forge, you will notice that this is a default character. And what I want to show you by doing this is the versatility of this program because I've been able to create all sorts of different characters with this. So obviously this is a human, but we can also go in and we can create elves or even a half elf, uh, dwarves, elementals. This is a bugbear, gnome. Uh, and then they've started adding animals, which I think uh, is awesome. Uh, here's a bear, a boar, elk, and we've got griffins, horses, uh, this is a mastiff. Um, I actually wish that for dogs they had a, a much more robust uh, system for creating various different types of dogs. The other day I wanted to build my own dog and Really, uh, they had dog here, which was close to what I wanted, but I would have liked to have been able to uh, change him around a little bit more. Anyway, anything you want to do. Okay, for this video, I think what I want to do is build a giant. And I want him to be kind of a, a, a big, broody kind of giant. So we'll start out with the species of human. Uh, we could start him certainly on one of the other species, but we're going to start out with the species of human. And um, what I want to do here is uh, we want to uh, alter his face. Now, I don't like the gigantic nose or the wide kind of looking face. Um... Uh, heroic features, smooth features, bold features. How about bold? Well, bold features, okay. I don't like the delicate features so much. Bulbous features, maybe. Oh, heavy features, okay. I like this. My face looks a little bit heavier looking, and to me that looks right for a giant. And then ears... I don't think he needs any specific type of ears. His hair. How do I want my giant's hair to look? I can give him the mo haircut. Um, to make him a little bit more fearful looking. Well, he can kind of look like me a little bit more. Now, I don't think my giant has a professional hairdresser, so we're not going to go for that. I think our giant is going to be fairly unkempt. 
Yeah, so I don't want him to have a nice, nice hairstyle. Maybe that'll work. Okay. Beard. Should we give him a beard? I don't know. Amish giant. Uh, like I said, I don't think he's got a big hair hairstylist going on there. I don't know. I'm kind of torn. Yeah, I think I'll give him that that beard. His brows will give him some bushy brows. Eyes. Realistically, humans just don't look right when you change the eyes. They don't have a very robust eye system in here, so I really just keep it to the basic eyes. But teeth, here we want, we want, well, you really can't see his teeth with the beard, so that's kind of a bummer. We could make him with some horrifying teeth, but you just can't really tell. Oh, actually, that might work. I kind of like those, a tusk, the tusk looking. Okay, we'll go with that. All right, so body. <clears throat> now here is where we're going to make him a giant. So we're going to make him the maximum height. Now this is going to be an 11-inch giant. Now, to tell you the truth, when you are making these figures, don't worry quite so much about the height in here. You could theoretically spend the lesser amount of money and get a regular height character and just print them larger. And you do that within your software. Um, but here you can do that. I, to be honest with you, I don't remember how much the, uh, the extra large costs. And I'm not, uh, when we go into that part, I'll, I'll look to see if the STL file, because you can buy as a pre-printed. You don't have a 3D printer, not a problem. They will 3D print this for you and ship it to you. If you are not good at painting, not a problem. They will 3D print it in color and ship it to you. It's all about how much you want to spend. But STL files for Hero Forge are only $7.99. And I'm not sure if they charge more for the extra large version in the STL file or not. We'll find that out. But <clears throat> don't worry. It, you can make in, in your printer software, you can make this guy any size you want. So really changing his size makes only a difference if you're having Hero Forge print that out for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and make him tall just because I want to try it out. And I think he needs a massive head. So I'm going to give him a massive head. Uh, wait, he definitely, he's a brawny guy. He's a big brawny guy. He's got some heft to him. So we're just going to really beef him out here. And what I realize I'm doing is I'm just making him kind of more in proportion for such a large character. Again, I can make him small and expand him out in my other software. But anyway, we'll go through this. Uh, posture. Okay. Um, I think he's a little stooped. So I'm going to make him stooped. Um, we're going to also give him the bigger build. Mm, that might be too big. There we go. Upper scale. Okay, we can... That looks pretty good. This guy's this guy's been weight lifting. Okay, upper scale. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. Arm length, okay? So he's a giant. He's got some pretty good sized guns. Muscularity, absolutely. This guy's gonna this guy's spending some serious time at the gym. Bust. Well, we can make him transgender, but I'm not gonna. And uh, waist, uh, very thin waist, give him a big waist. Belly, okay. So obviously 
my giant, he drinks a lot of beer. So he's going to have a big waist. Um, big belly, big waist. Curves, um, no, no. He, uh, th this, this more is for your feminine characters. You want them to have that, that more feminine, uh, wide pelvis. Uh, that, that's it right there. And then, uh, we'll check out the booty. Nah, I don't think so. I'll leave it alone. Okay, so then, now I've, I've, mm, man, I kind of gave him a funky belly. I don't like that. I mean, let me go back in here and figure this out, where, where I screwed up on the belly. Oh, yeah, oh, there we go. Okay, so we need probably not quite so much belly. I don't, what I don't like about this is, is my belly is really coming out down here, and realistically, it should kind of start more up in the chest. Maybe if I made a bigger bust and a bigger belly. Now, it still kind of makes this really crazy S shape here. So I'm not going to give him the belly. I'm going to drop the bust, and we're going to be fine with that. He doesn't need wings. I could give him wings. I could give him a tail. Or um, uh, it's like... Uh, I can give him a turtle shell, s spines, whatever, you know. Clothes. I like this feature a lot about uh, this. The clothing um, really makes the man. This is actually fine giant clothes, but he is not going to be having anything, you know, super fancy. But, you know, here we can really... We, um, we can have our giant to be a giant warrior. I mean, he looks actually pretty tough here. I actually, I actually pretty much like this. This is pretty cool. But, uh, uh, this is not your Jack in the Beanstalk kind of giant. This is... Uh, <laughs> he, but I like him. I like him. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm going to use this guy. I don't know. That's cool. I'm certainly going to uh, keep that one in mind. Um, not so much there. Uh, swashbuckler. Um, there's your uh, your your wasteland survivor outfit. Um, wow. All right. Or or or. I can go back into the Marilyn Monroe look. What do you think? So <laughs> let's go back up here. We're going to... I'm sorry. I just like this too much. And hopefully it doesn't mess up with how I want to do it in the future. But anyway, we can change the uh, headdress that he has on. Uh, this little wider. I think... My guy would have the wider one. He's got the, the, the beard and, and the jaws. I don't think he would go for anything that wouldn't show his face that much. Um, and, or we can give him a cowboy hat. So you have a lot of options for headdresses um, on these. Um, you can really uh, change it out quite a bit. Um, and, and this is, again, very robust program for, for creating your characters. Uh, shoulder, um, I could change those shoulders there. This is what's currently on there, but if I like something a little bit more modern um, or maybe a little bit more draped, um, more armorish or more deadly looking, I wear the skull. Those of my enemies. I think I might keep it. All right, we're going to go with the skulls. Um, chest, um, if I don't particularly like this, um, it's got the, kind of these eyes and these large teeth here. Um, let's see. Oh, this is... The, oh, this is the undershirt area. So you're going to see this mostly... I see... Right at the top here, you go over the under, or the under, and then the over, and then the neck, how you want the neck to look. 
So this is pretty cool. For, so for the chest, <clears throat> he has different layers to this. <clears throat> and right here is where you're going to see the under very well. And so this is what we have underneath him. Um, this is more of a, a woven look. Uh, this is more uh, skin, really. This is more skin. Um, or kind of a more of a baggy look to it. Um, perhaps leather. Um, I think I'm going to stick with the woven look. I like it. Um, I'm not super sold on the um, the collar, but it is what it is. So let's go to the over portion. So this is your chest plate. Um, <clears throat> I guess uh, Bob the Builder. Um, uh, Roman Conqueror. Uh, Fonzie. Uh, shoot, you know. And... Hmm... Hmm. No. I don't know. Do I like that? Nah. I actually think I'm going to stick with um, what he had. And then for the neck, you could give him different looks on his neck piece. Um, no, it's too... Okay, I like that one. Got these little small skulls emblazoned in his neck. And I really think I like that. Okay, we're going to go with that. And then in legs. <clears throat> Again, we have the under and the over portions of the legs. And uh, I, I, I want to keep the, the, the woven motif, but you could certainly change it to something else. Um, however you want it to look. And then over, oh, I think this is the, this piece right here, the Elven Guardian skirt, the blacksmith apron, uh, what is that? Mercenary leather skirt. Yeah, it just makes his legs look terrible. But I like the belt. I like the belt a lot. Okay. <clears throat> I think it, it matches the rest of the other motif, but I, I don't like it that much. Okay, now we'll go down to feet. And he's got Elven Guardian uh, greaves and boots. Um, I'm going to see if they got something else here. Oh, there's your lion's. See, that's what I was going for. I was looking to see if they had maybe some skulls for the knee pads. I'm not seeing it. That would have been fun. But, or bunny slippers. What the hey? My giant wears bunny slippers. Okay. Alrighty, uh, blah, 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 blah. all the way up top, I guess. Where were we? The mercenary leather boots? No, no, they're definitely not mercenary leather boots. Elven guardian boots, there we go. And... Oh, gosh, no. Okay, we're going to go back to the elven guardian boots. Okay, and then if we wanted to give him a mask... Uh, Oh, they moved that section to the underhead menu. So, all right. And then, okay, now we got, we can give him some gear. What do we want him to have? Okay. <clears throat> um, and what I like about this section is if there's something specific you are looking for, then you can actually search in here. So let's say a hammer. And here is the elegant warhammer, which kind of matches. 
Um, there's the light hammer. Or a dwarven hammer. Look at that thing. Oh, jeez, that would do some damage. Um, so, that's at the end of the hammers there. My guy needs something grand, grander than that. <clears throat> if he uh, wasn't all in armor and stuff like that, if I wanted to make him more Stone Age looking, then uh, that would be a good hammer. But, actually... I'm going to go with this one. <clears throat> now, if you notice over here, you can have him have something different in each hand. <clears throat> so let's say we want a shield. And we're going to put a shield in that other hand. It's a wooden shield. Oh, dang it. Wow, that's gruesome. I don't know. I'm making this super hard on myself. I mean, I'm really making this super hard on myself because <laughs> printing this little bad boy is going to be really hard to do. But <laughs> it's so stinking cool. It is so stinking cool. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> All right. There we are. Um, we can give him a backpack if we wanted to. We can put something on his back. Um, shoulder cape. Nah. Um, <clears throat> fur cloak. <clears throat> or, there we go. Nice little bow on the back. Have beer well travel. Shoot. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of him carrying around his own beer. But the rugged fur cloak, again, going to make it hard on me. I mean, the likelihood that I fail my print is high, and I don't really want to fail a print on a tutorial. But <laughs> I like that. Um, I think I'm going to go with the beer barrel. Roll out the barrel. We'll have a barrel of fun. So, pose, okay? So, his pose isn't terrible. He's actually pretty well posed. I mean, it's, that's the default right here. Um, <clears throat> but let's say I wanted him ready for action. Bam. Just like that. Really, really simple and fast. Uh, poses or he's getting ready he is charging into battle although he'd probably be better off with his shield out in front of him if he's doing battle or uh, I feel pretty oh so pretty I feel pretty and witty and gay okay um, oh damn I think my singing killed him okay let's see what do we want to do here um, there's, that looks stinking cool, except for he hammered himself in the chest, but, and, and of course, you know, here's the thing, you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to do something to, to get him to stand up, because that's not, that's not going to fly, unless you keep the base with him. If you keep a base on him, then he'll, he, he, he'll, he'll stand with the base, I suppose. Here's my idea on bases. I generally don't print with bases, and that's because I want to put them into my diorama or book nooks. And if I have a base, now I've got to integrate that into the diorama. Whereas if I don't have a base, now I can, I can make the ground and then 
insert my character onto the ground. And uh, so I wouldn't print this guy with a base if I was putting him into a diorama. Okay, this is the I just heard something that could be dangerous pose. And it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with this one. It'll stand up real well on its own without a base. Um, now here, this is where you can change how you want your face to actually look. Okay, so basically I got a, I got a neutral expression on my guy. And um, if I want to cut down on his... Uh, it looks like smile actually changes how wide. I'm sure that it, underneath the the hair, he's actually smiling. But also in this situation, I'm opening up the mouth wider, and I'm and you can see the musculature of the cheeks change here. Um, I can make him a little cocky. I don't want that. Um, what I really want is a snarl, and I really like that. Or or, here we go, let's go with the ah, which works. So there's my facial expression. Now, under advanced, um, you can do a lot of really neat things. They have the basic poses for your characters. However, Sometimes the basic poses are not exactly what you want. You want, so like, um, I wanted uh, Scrooge to have this surprised look with his hand up to his mouth. Of course, they didn't have that. Under advanced, I can move those arms around however I want. Um, on one of my other creations, I have a violinist. So I have my creation holding the violin and holding the bow and getting ready to use the bow. <clears throat> in this, um, you know, in, in using this particular menu allows you to have some fine-tuned control over how the arms are placed. Legs, they don't do so much, and I guess that's more in your pose. Uh, the legs... Uh, you know, we, we don't emote with our legs. We emote with our hands. So on the hammer, <clears throat> so the hammer is highlighted here, and I can twist how he's holding the hammer here. I think I like the way it was initially. And then the grip position, I can change where he's holding the hammer. Okay. Um, I could reverse the whole thing, which is pretty funky looking. So, <clears throat> anyway, this is um, <clears throat> his uh, shield. I can twist how it is rotating his hand, but that doesn't make any sense. Because it's being held in his forearm, twisting it around too much without twisting the forearm makes no sense. So I can change it this way. And in that way, it does kind of make more sense. But I think I need to change the shoulder. Yeah. OK, I'm totally jacking that up. Oh my god. What did I do? Clavicle bend. Um, there we go. All right. So you can fine tune how your character looks with this. <clears throat> and so this is what I really like about the, uh, the advanced. And look at this, I lied to you. There's, I don't remember this being there before, but we can actually change Okay, this changes where he's sitting on the base. Okay, so maybe I didn't lie to you after all. <clears throat> that just sits out, it changes how he sits on the base. All right, uh, and then this right here is 
diff- different things that we can do on on the base. We can add in extras. If there's something that we want at his feet. Um, so if we're keeping a base, so this is the base and we can change how the base looks. And like I said, I don't like bases on my characters, so I'm not gonna build him with a base. But if I was to build him with a base, let's say, oh crud, oh crud, that totally jacked me up. Okay, good. <clears throat> I don't want to uh, change his position. So this is a grassy square, a brick road. Brick road, I see it's so small. I I can't apparently change the size of his base. Which bites. Which is another reason why I wouldn't, wouldn't do this. The rim. You can make it a decorative rim. Um, again, I'm not doing this. But okay, but this is what I wanted to show you though, is if I did have a base, Okay, now we want to put in an extra. Now, let's say um, we wanted to put a skull of an enemy at his ba at the base there. We can do that. Um, I think I have to rotate him around. The skull on the backside makes no sense. Um, and some bones. There we go. We can drop some bones on the base there. So if I wanted that, <clears throat> then I could do that. But again, don't want a base, so bye-bye base. And it makes no sense of adding in the extras if you have no base. Okay. And now in this segment, I told you that we, you can choose to color your creation. In this segment here is where you'd be able to color all the different pieces of your selection. If you wanted to give him uh, more of a human coloring, um, it's like this is all his body, his body coloring. So if I wanted to give him a greenish look there. Um, for an STL file, you don't need that. Um, so I generally avoid this, but if you wanted them to print this out in color for you, there it is. This is where you would, you could literally paint him yourself. You choose your paints and you apply them where you want them. So <clears throat> let's say we want to give him a green face. We're going to give him a, uh, Cream, oh no, that doesn't change his eyes. So we gotta go back to the green face. and But we do want to give him kind of a sterling silver beard kind of look. Nah, I don't think I like the sterling silver. That's the gray day. Gray day look on his beard. And we'll do sterling silver here and then they have metals. Actual gold. Okay. So we're going to give him some gold highlights here. And go back to that sterling silver for this section. And see how well I'm able to paint this. Okay, and I think that we're going to go back to his facial color for this ridge here. Kind of like that. That's better. Maybe. Um, and then we need that weighty white here. And over here here and we need that actual gold along the edge and inside there and we'll go with the green on here 
So you, you have a lot of freedom as to how you want your color. Again, I don't color mine, so I don't care. <clears throat> so once you've got your guy together the way you want him, you're going to select buy, okay? And um, so if you buy just in the plastic version, that's $20. And then because we made him extra large, it's going to be an extra $10 on top of that. So that's a $30 build right there. You can also buy it in premium pla plastic, which makes it a $40 build, or colored plastic, and then we're up to <clears throat> a $60 build, okay? Um, this is cool because it also comes, you can have a bronze character if you want. You're going to be looking at $200 for that bad boy, okay? STL downloads. Okay, good. This is cool. The XL costs no extra. So it is $7.99 basic. So you have your own 3D printer. That's the way to go. That STL download is the way to go. And then there's three, a 3D digital option. And I'm guessing that this is for uh, tabletop simulators. So you can have your 3D character plop down on the tabletop simulator and see him from different directions and stuff like that. And that's pretty cool too. One of these days I think I might like to get a tabletop simulator, but I go with STLs. So um, <clears throat> this, is, this is what I'm gonna buy. And so I'm gonna add him to my cart. And then uh, I'll view my cart. And um, we'll check out. And Now I found with Hero Forge, even checking out on a STL does take them a little time to generate the order. And so eventually uh, it will come up. If I go into my account and um, I can go into my digital downloads and looks like he it is, it's not available to me yet. It comes up as processing. So I just have to wait for them to process it. So the next stage to this will be downloading the STL file and then moving it into my program so that I can now work towards 3D printing. So a couple of minutes and one piece of pie later, I'm ready to download my STL. So we'll go ahead and Download that into my computer and looks like it's already downloaded. So the downloaded file will come kind of like this and some kind of crazy uh, number there. Uh, you'll extract it out and um, I generally don't keep the extracted files, uh, the zipped files. And But if I go in here uh, oh, I forgot to name my giant. Okay, so we're just going to rename it giant. So now that I have my giant file set up, I'm going to move that out of the way. Now this is a program called Cheetu Box. It seems to be a popular program amongst the 3D printing community. Um, I Now, when you buy your 3D printer, it will come with a program that will allow you to 3D print on your printer. I use a third-party one, the Chai2Box, because 
it seems to have a more robust support feature. My 3D printer is Anycubic, uh, and I like the program that Anycubic bundles with their printer. And if you are buying pre-supported files, then you can just go ahead and use their program. It'll work just well. But if you are having to build your own supports, then Cheetobox is probably the better. Um, and what I mean by supports, with your uh, FDM printers, the, the ones that extrude layer by layer from a base, they extrude it up, upwards, right? Anything that's overhanging needs a support um, because the, the extruder needs some way to basically build in thin air. Got it? So there needs to be like a support built up so that as the extruder is building the project that's overhanging, that there's something that'll hold that overhang in place as the extruder builds on top of it. Uh, otherwise, it's built. It's trying to build out in the thin air, and all you end up doing is spewing uh, um, molten uh, plastic all over your plate. Um, I don't do FDM printing for these characters, and the big reason why is that FDM printers generally have a very rough texture to them, and they don't do fine detail very well. If you are planning on 3D printing for your mini projects, I heartily suggest you going with a resin printer. Resin printers are different. Resin printers will uh, have a vat of resin, which is the, the, the printing medium, and the plate dips down into the vat of resin, um, and then underneath the vat is a UV light. The UV light will activate the resin and harden it. In certain areas, the screen underneath the vat will black out. Those areas will not be hardened. The areas that are clear will harden. So as, what will happen is as the build plate goes down into the vat, the resin underneath the build plate will harden and stick to the build plate. Now you'll see the build plate go up and then drop back down. Go up, drop down, just over and over and over again until it builds up a character. The difference between FDM, the, the, the filament printers, and the resin printers is that re, uh, FDM printers will build from the base of the object upwards. Resin builds everything upside down, so it's kind of crazy looking. But they too need to be supported. Anything that isn't, um, that is an island on a resin print, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute, but anything that's an island won't actually print or won't print correctly. So you need to make sure that you have supports. So both different types of printers require supports. Um, so you have to learn how to build supports. And let me tell you, that was daunting for me, which is one of the reasons why I'm building, making this video is to show you that making your supports isn't really as difficult as I made it up in my mind to be. And uh, if you're new to 3D printing, it won't be as difficult as you think it needs to be. So uh, for a long time, I went with only buying pre-supported items, but that gets to be limiting. And for like Hero Forge, they don't, they don't pre-support those prints. You've got to support them. So let's, let's go in and, and do that. We're going to pull in our giant. And there he is. Boom. Da -da -da -da. All right. So I'm going to rotate him around a little bit. Okay, he's pretty centered on my plate. I like that. He's he's just looking badass as hell. Okay, <clears throat> but 
This is where I want to show you the idea of islands, okay? This little slider off to the side shows my creation slice by slice. So as I move this slider up, you'll see the various slices pop into being. So this is the very soles of his feet. And then the next slices and the next slices it comes up, right? And so now it's building from, from the plate. This is the plate. It's building from the plate up and it's upside down. So feet come first, all right? So as we go, now I've said C right here, this guy right there. <clears throat> Let me go a little closer. That's an island, right? There's an island. And the reason why he's an island is because he's not connected to the build plate. So when the ultraviolet light lights up in this segment, there'll be nothing for it to stick to. So as a result, nothing will grow from it. It'll be basically stuck to the bottom of your vat. And it'll be an ugly mess that you'll have to clean up. So this is why you need supports. So over here in this corner uh, is the support function for the, for the printer. And <clears throat> when you go into, into Chai Two Box, when you go into support uh, mode, it will automatically uh, raise your model up slightly off the build plate. And that's to allow for supports underneath the feet. Theoretically, and I've done it in the past, you could put your feet right down on the build plate and build up from there. It's not really the ideal way to do it, so I generally don't do it that way. But there's one thing, before we get into support, there's one thing we want to do. Let me bring my guy back, okay? Um, off times, building, a char uh, building supports for a character standing up straight like this isn't always the best way to do it. Um, there's lots of overhangs, and overhangs that o overhang overhangs mean that you have to support on top of your character, and you don't necessarily want to do that. Also, you want to build as few supports as possible. And as a result, you kind of want to um, build your character in, in a way that's not super intuitive. And, and what I mean by that is building them in an angled position is sometimes more advantageous to your, to your print than trying to build them as you would straight up and down. And you kind of have to play with your model a little bit to find out what the best position to to grow your model out of. I, on my characters, I'll always lean them backwards. And the reason why is the supports will come up the back. The supports will leave little, sometimes little um, rough spots behind, or they can. Uh, you can sand those down and make them nice and smooth if, if you want. Um, but they can, they can uh, make little damaging areas to your character. So I always build my supports on the side of the character that is not easily viewable by the person who is viewing it. So that means building my character on its back usually because the backs are generally not to the viewer. So, um, so I'll build my supports up there. That way if there's a slight imperfection in that segment, it's not going to be noticeable. Um, and so how do you know whether or not you need to lean your character back? Well, let's put him back down on the plate there. Okay. Put him back down on the plate, exactly solid. And we'll go into our, um, into our supports, okay? So if you look up underneath your character, all these areas that are pink are going to be areas that won't print well unless supported. The, the program automatically kind of looks at that. Um, and this guy actually could easily be printed upright. 
if you notice this whole chest area really um, just is it, it the supports can still reach it without this is a support line and the supports can still reach it without touching another part of of him so I would say this one's probably good to go ahead and and print standing up I was worried about underneath this skirt whether it would print well and it looks like it actually will so we'll go ahead and and we're gonna go ahead and support this guy up so when you get into chai to box on the support settings um, I don't mess with these a whole lot these are these areas um, it tends to be pretty much the way I want it um, and again I'm kind of a beginner at this so your more expert people will go, oh no, you gotta change this, you gotta change that, and make this exactly perfect. Um, but I find it works pretty much out of the box. The only things I do change is whether my support that I'm doing is a light, medium, or heavy, and I'll show you why. I always start out with heavy supports first because I want my character to print well. So I'm gonna build some heavy supports first off underneath the feet okay because I want this guy to be firmly rooted to the build plate okay and then I'm going to find certain areas that uh, you know that need need that support you know what? I don't like that one completely I'm going to remove that support real quick and it needs to be right there at the tip so <clears throat> I'm gonna find all these areas, like right at the tip of things, um, and put in a heavy support right there. Um, and then this one could use a heavy support. Um, the hammer, I'm gonna actually put in two heavy supports on it. And then I think I'm gonna also put heavy support on this end here um, nothing along that back looks like it needs to be supported much at all and then um, I think I'm gonna build a heavy support no no I don't think I want a heavy support there Let me get rid of that um, I might put one looks like Underneath his arms uh, is is pretty bright pink. So I'm going to drop a couple of heavy supports there. And then right here in the crotch, almost always, you kind of need a support up underneath there. They always tend to be kind of hot pink right there. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now that I've got my heavy supports in place, I'm going to go on to my medium supports. This is areas that need supports, but they don't need that big heavy support. And they're when they're removed, they're going to do far less damage to your model. So I'm going to put a little supporting there. A little support. Oh, wait, I didn't want to do that. I don't like that one. See, I don't like to support on my on my character if I can if I can avoid it. So let's see if we can do that. There we go. Now I bet you I can do it. There we go. Now I'll put a medium support in there on the rib cage, and another one right there. And I have mine set for tree supports. And the tree supports make these branching areas where the supports are actually supporting the supports. And I like that. I want to make sure that the supports are. St I've had supports where they have gotten wobbly and the uh, the print doesn't end up coming out because the supports themselves aren't well supported. So I'll leave these tree supports often. So any of these low areas I'm gonna look for and I'm gonna drop a medium. I'm gonna drop a medium here and then I'm going to probably drop a medium over here. And um, my skeletal chin here looks like he needs a medium support and then I was looking at that beard 
And I'm going to put a medium support in on the beard. I really like how that ended up going to turn out. That, that barrel on his back prints out really well without any need for supports whatsoever. Okay, so these are my medium supports. Now the light supports I'm going to put into areas where I need more de uh, detail support, detailed support. Well, actually, you know what? I found a couple of new places to put a medium support. I like one right there. Yep. I think I'm going to put one over here, and one right there, one there. <clears throat> All right. So on my light supports, I think I'm going to put one here and here, and then each one of these knuckles are going to end up being an island for me. So in that finger. Okay, so a couple right there, and maybe one here, a couple extra in there. Looks like you might need one there. That's a maybe. And my skeleton um, rig here. I think it kind of needs a couple of them. It's going to be hard to tell for sure. And then if I've got like a light support that's really, really long all by itself, then I'll usually run... A support onto it again I'm supporting the supports just like that sorry if I'm making you a little dizzy here okay so once I think I've got everything right now I'm gonna error check myself and I do that by going into the slicing thing again, okay? So as I'm gonna bring as I bring up my slices, I'm gonna be looking for islands that pop up. Now there's that island that I, I showed you earlier, but I have him supported, so he's just fine. Okay, and then there's another island that popped up over here, again supported. Island that popped up there, supported. Okay, now here's a number of islands that just popped up over on this side. And I want to get a closer look at it if I can. There we go. So you can see, oh gosh, I can't, there we go. You can see where this island got supported, this island got supported, but I missed this, there's these two right here. And I completely, utterly missed them. <clears throat> Let's bring that one up. So that one right there. I don't know. I don't know if that one's worth supporting or not. There we go. Okay. Okay, so those are all Everything looks looking good here so far. And I'm probably not going to get a lot more islands. I'm 
Okay. All right. I think our supports are good. Your 3D printer will come with a little thumb drive like this, and that's what you're gonna to use to move this file from your computer to your 3D printer. So we're gonna plug that in real quick, and then we're gonna tell it to save. Now that the print is saved on my thumb drive, I'm gonna eject it from my computer. Now we're gonna head on over to the 3D printer. I use the Anycubic Photon Mono 4K 3D printer. Now I have this other 3D printer over here, which is a Photon Mono, but it's the standard resolution one. And it doesn't get as much use since I bought the 4K, but I do, um, I do still use it on occasion. Um, particularly if I'm doing lots of different prints and some of them don't, don't need to be as high, high quality. Uh, we're going to use the 4K. I also use water washable resins and mostly because they're a little less toxic. So now we're going to take our USB drive and we're going to insert it into the 3D printer and turn it on. And hit print, and now we're gonna search through various different files I got stored on here. Oh, there it is. Okay. And we're gonna hit the play button, which is basically print. I think you printed out pretty good. I don't see any major failures anywhere. After a quick wash, our piece is complete. Now you can see more detail on him. Now we washed off the excess. <clears throat> now I want to be very careful about taking off these sprues because it's very easy to break your model on accident. So you want like a little piece, uh, like a wire cutter that looks kind of like that. That'll, that'll help you break the sprues off. Again, I just kind of slowly eat away at these to make sure that I don't break the model itself. And there we have it. 
built our our giant. Um, now you'll notice there's little nubs where the sprues were or the supports were, and you could take this is a you can buy these on Amazon. Um, they are uh, 3D printing uh, kits, and they have these little sanding deals, and you can just go in there and sand down those those points. And I like to do it before curing the the model because once you've cured it, now it's hard and you have to now sand a lot harder. While it's soft like this, it, it, it's a lot easier to clean up those little pieces. Once we've got it looking the way we want it, I usually usually take a paper towel and I dry it off. Okay, now we're going to, this is a wash and curing station. So I used it to wash him. Now I put this little magnetic disc down and I can put my piece in there. Put that on. I'm, now I'm switching it over to curing and give it a time. It won't take more than a couple minutes to cure him. Now then, you'll get UV lights go on inside there, and those UV lights will cure up our model. All right. Now then, I want to turn him over and I want to cure his backside now. Once your miniature has cured, it is now time to paint him. So over here, I have my painting station, which is really kind of a mess because it's got three different projects on it, or maybe four. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole painting um, of this guy with you. Uh, really, it depends on your comfort level with painting and uh, your skill level, but one thing I do recommend, you can use <coughs> acrylic paints such as this. Uh, these craft paints are cheap, uh, but the uh, the color inside of them, the, the little particles of color are very large. And often you end up with a, uh, a, a almost a chalky appearance to your miniature. So as a result, what I suggest that you use is these little, um, these are uh, Army Painter War Paints. Um, they're different brands of it, but they're made for minis. And so they're little tiny bottles. A little tiny bit of this paint goes a long way. The, um, the pigments are very fine and they cover your model very well, but they also, um, give it a more natural appearance. And you're gonna to wanna to also invest in some very fine uh, brushes so that you can catch those little tiny details in there. And there you go. We went from concept to 3D printed mini. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. I know that I struggled a lot when I was first doing 3D printables and if you uh, have any suggestions for me, feel free to put those in the comments section. They'll probably help me as well as other people. But it's a lot of fun. And until next time, you keep watching, I'll keep building.